Hello, welcome to Bridging the Verifiability Gap, why we need more from our specs and how we can get it. My name is Jordan Halterman. I'm a member of the technical staff at the Open Networking Foundation, where I focus on distributed systems. So first, a brief overview of the talk. First, I'll talk a, a little bit about distributed systems at ONF and then talk about what I'm calling the verifiability gap. Then I'll talk about a couple of the approaches that we take to um, overcoming this verifiability gap, model-based trace checking and model-based conformance monitoring. And then finally, uh, a little bit about what we learned along the way. So distributed systems at ONF. So the Open Networking Foundation is an industry-funded, open-source, uh, nonprofit foundation. Um, and we're dedicated to bringing software-defined networking technology to production in the industry uh, from research. So ONF has a, a small engineering staff, which is where I come from, um, <clears throat> that works on a pretty large variety of really ambitious open source projects. And the project that I work on in particular, or that I was originally hired to work on, is a project called Onos. Uh, Onos is, a, is an open source software-defined network controller. Uh, it, was the, it was the first project created at ONF, and it was eventually brought into production a few years back. Uh, at Comcast. So what is a software-defined network controller? So the whole idea of software-defined networking is to take network control out of proprietary hardware into a software layer. And so in a, in a network, when you have, you know, a number of hardware switches, Onos sits above the switches and controls switches to do <clears throat> things like packet forwarding, uh, device configuration management, and things like that. And Onos actually does this with several nodes, so it's actually a distributed system, and the Onos nodes communicate with each other, and they do so, you know, they do so for scale and fault tolerance and things like that. <clears throat> and so within the Onos cluster, we run a bunch of different types of protocols like gossip, uh, failure detection, consensus protocols, sharding, primary backup, and things like that. And so Onos actually is a pretty large and complex distributed system. And so that brings me to our use of TLA plus and what I'm calling the verifiability gap. So in 2018, we began field trials of Onos to bring it into production uh, at Comcast. <clears throat> and during this process, we learned a lot of stuff. So uh, production scale testing exposed a lot of bugs that, that we realized had been dormant in our system for, for years, but we'd just never seen because we'd never tested it in quite the right way. And I personally spent hours and often days scanning, you know, gigabyte sized logs uh, to try to understand traces and track down specific distributed systems bugs. Um, <clears throat> but after lots and lots of this work, uh, Onos was eventually deployed uh, nationwide in Comcast network. And TLA plus was an important part of that process. So during that process, we used TLA plus to design new distributed systems protocols, improve existing protocols. And some examples of the types of work that we did with TLA plus were, uh, we used it to extend the RAF consensus protocol, used it to build new distributed locking algorithms, design custom primary backup protocols. And we've even used it for some, some research using uh, software-defined networking techniques to build new consensus protocols. 
And so TLA plus was really critical in helping to validate solutions for a lot of bugs, <clears throat> but we felt it could have been more effective if we'd been able to use it in the initial design uh, of the system. And so fortunately for us, in 2018, our team, the Onos team, began rewriting Onos. Uh, since Onos, since the Onos project had begun, um, we'd seen the rise of the, the cloud and projects like Kubernetes, and so we wanted to rewrite Onos. And so what this represented for me was opportunity. And the opportunity was to try to sort of rethink how we were how we were designing and, and developing distributed systems in Onos. <clears throat> and so when we began re rewriting Onos, we did so with a focus on testing and debugging infrastructure uh, with, with the goal of answering a couple of questions. So one was, how can we reduce the number of bugs in the system? And the other was, how can we make debugging for bugs that do arise easier? And so the solution for us was a new commitment to TLA plus as well. And so from the start, we began using TLA plus to design uh, parts of the new Onos system. Uh, we used it to document and verify the algorithms that we were using and hoping that the specs that we wrote would provide a foundation for experimenting with enhancements in the future. Uh, and so, so far in, in rewriting Onos, we've used TLA plus to design new leader election algorithms, verify control loop logic, design distributed caches and, and more. But the, but the problem that we ran into was, so now, now we're using TLA plus for all this stuff. And so we know, even if we know algorithms are correct. How do we know the code is correct? And so this is the this is the verifiability gap that I I'm talking about. <clears throat> and so what would the what would our ideal solution to this gap look like? Well, when we design a new algorithm with TLA plus and verify the algorithm with, algorithm with TLC, we thought we should be able to then implement the algorithm with whatever language we the language of our choice. Uh, and after doing so, we should be able to verify the implementation using our TLA plus spec. And when bugs arise, debug the implementation using the TLA plus spec, which contains uh, everything that we should need to be able to do that. And so why do that with TLA plus though? Well, our algorithms are, are already specified in TLA plus. And so using an alternative tool to do this would sort of present the same problem uh, as writing the implementation does uh, insofar as trying to make sure that the implementation uh, maintains consistency with the TLA plus spec. And sort of being able to use TLA plus to verify the implementation could also help encourage engineers to use TLA plus to design new algorithms as well. And so we set out to explore some ways that we could close this gap. And the first that we looked at was model-based trace checking. The idea of model-based trace checking is that we would be able to run our application uh, log application traces in a structured format like JSON, consume that structured format into a TLA plus model, uh, change the state and verify some invariants to check that the actual implementation adheres to those invariants. And to do this, we actually built our own uh, test framework. So we have this test framework for uh, testing Helm charts in Kubernetes. <clears throat> so we have a test command that basically deploys a test coordinator inside Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is, an, is a container orchestration platform, so it's sort of like a distributed system for running distributed systems. It's not incredibly important here. But we deploy our, deploy our test coordinator. Our coordinator deploys our distributed systems like Raft, Onos, uh, and then runs some test, tells those distributed systems to do things, 
they interact with each other. Uh, and then finally, eventually they send logs back to the coordinator where they get aggregated and sent back to the, to the client. <clears throat> and this is where we can run, uh, run TLC to do trace checking with, with TLA plus. And this is what a, an example spec looks like to do trace checking. So you see that we imported this module called <clears throat> trace. So the trace module is basically what reads traces uh, from some structured format like JSON. <clears throat> and you see in the, ne in the next state relation, we're basically reading a, a next structured trace and then doing something with it. And in this case, we're um, testing a distributed cache. Um, so we basically read a trace, uh, record it in a history variable, uh, and then there's a an invariant that basically is checking that a client never sees history go back in time. And so this seemed to work really great for a client-centric consistency model like this, where we're basically checking that the client is seeing some specific sp specific behavior and more importantly, not seeing some other behavior. Uh, but it still wasn't obvious how to ensure that the code impl correctly implements every single step of the spec uh, internally. And so this sort of feels like it depends on our ability to trigger bugs. And we're not really too confident in that because as our production experience showed, um, we, we see a lot of bugs uh, in production that, we're, that we seem to be unable to trigger ourselves in testing environments. And so we'd really like to be able to detect bugs when they happen rather than relying on our ability to make them occur. And so that brings us to the second approach we took to uh, verifying our implementations, which is model-based conformance monitoring. So the idea of conformance monitoring is it's very similar to trace checking, except we're doing it in real time so that we can uh, try to catch those bugs that happen in production. And so the idea is just that it will, the application logs traces to a stream instead of just to a, some file that's later processed in batch. Uh, and again, the TLC process consumes the traces from the stream, updates the model state, checks invariants, and with an added feature of being able to alert when an invariant is violated since we're processing an infinite stream of traces. And so to do this, we actually updated our test infrastructure uh, and we added a system called Kafka. And Kafka is the system that Onos now writes its traces to. And so what Kafka is, is it's actually a distributed fault tolerant log which sort of in this architecture acts as a buffer for the for the traces coming out of Onus and then going into uh, the model checker. Uh, and so then the model checker runs on the other side of Kafka. There's a model input to it. It reads streams. It reads traces uh, as fast as it can, while while the other side writes traces as fast as it can. Uh, and then TLC does its thing, which it does great. And this is what the uh, conformance monitoring spec looks like for the same uh, for the same distributed caching algorithm. Uh, there, let's look at it up close. <clears throat> there are just a couple of differences. So we're again tracking the offset. Uh, if in this case the offset is basically an offset in Kafka. Uh, and we've added this trace operator. So what the trace operator does is given an offset, it basically <clears throat> either if the offset is available in Kafka in the buffer, uh, it will read it. Otherwise, it will it will block and wait for the next trace to become available so it can uh, evaluate it. Uh, and again, we're just checking the same uh, invariant basically verifying that the history will not go back in time. But in this case, we've also added an alert operator. And the alert operator basically says, when this invariant is violated, we can write a message back to Kafka so it can go to some monitoring uh, system or, or some other place like that. And so there, there are some challenges with this that we, that we are still working to try to overcome. 
Uh, one is it's really difficult to figure out how to limit the, the size of the trace in an infinite stream. You know, if we want to be able to, when an invariant is violated, identify the trace that led to it, we're basically dealing with an infinite trace, which becomes uh, very difficult to figure out how to handle. Uh, and then there are obviously ordering issues in a distributed system. <clears throat> this was our, our test model was easy to work with because it, um, it, it didn't require some order across processes. Uh, basically we're just establishing that the history is, um, is ordered within some single process, but it becomes a much bigger problem when you need order across processes. Uh, and so obviously one way you'd have to do that is perhaps rely on timestamps for ordering across processes, which isn't always ideal, but maybe it's okay for model checking or for basically a monitoring system like this. <clears throat> uh, and so again, uh, it feels like it works best for a client-centric consistency model like the one in our example. Uh, but there may be some ways to improve it so you can do ordering across processes. Things like uh, clock synchronization protocols are getting much, much more accurate uh, and they could be really useful in this context, but you'd still need a sorting step, um, which, which uh, it just complicates the architecture, but it seems like it could be possible. So that finally brings me to what we learned along the way. So I think what we learned is that it's generally possible to use TLA plus to check traces and we, we're sort of fond of the approach. Um, but like I've said a couple times, it it's, seems to be easier to test local invariants than global invariants, which might have to deal with ordering issues across multiple processes. Um, but unfortunately we weren't really able to do do something like trace checking using our original specs, which was sort of our, our dream uh, to be able to write a spec and then be able to use it to ve verify some system. They still require some modification. Um, but the modularity of TLA plus does allow for specs to share logic. So you can actually organize specs uh, in a way where this can be done cleanly, where you have both the, the portion of the spec that you use for original model checking and then another module that you use for trace checking. But we still see significant value in trace checking with TLA+. I think we've had a lot of success in using it uh, the way that we used it in, in uh, our examples here. And I think we continue to, to we will continue to do that um, to verify uh, things like API guarantees inside of Onos. Uh, but we still we still haven't really figured out how to use it to verify internal implementations and so maybe other approaches like um, test case generation and things like that are better in this respect. Um, but by making it part of our infrastructure, we hope, which we are still going to be, we are still going to do, we hope to be able to um, use it to detect bugs before they're seen in production. Uh, and then we hope to learn to be able to use it to reduce the efforts required to debug systems and um, that that experience will help us find new ways to generalize this approach and make it more usable.